Welcome to Ruji Ruminations and Revelations podcast. My name is Kina Atkinson and I'm your host as well as the founder of Ruji Wellness. Today's episode is com- is coming to you because of a question that I posed on Facebook a few days ago and I did not expect or imagine that uh, that several people would be interested in hearing this episode in particular, which is about the difference between praise and acknowledgement. I'm so glad and thankful that y'all are interested though. So here we are, we're going to get right into it. Um, I told a story the other day about how my children are both home for spring break. I was home, but I was working. I actually chose to go on a a tour within my county. I went on like a tour throughout a couple of different uh, cities in my county and the kids were home and the beginning of spring break, my youngest child was like, mom, when are you going to cook? When are you cooking? When? And I got to the point where I was like, listen, I'm not cooking. As a matter of fact, y'all are capable of cooking. Uh, so I will help you uh, get th- with the grocery list decide what y'all want to eat and and y'all can go and get y'all can go grocery shopping and get the food and come back and make it but I'm not cooking and so I didn't cook last week my children did step up they did cook not only did they cook they also did the dishes they cleaned their bathroom they cleaned tidied up their room they didn't clean their room but they tidied it up right and 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 it wasn't because I got to make mom proud So let me rewind back in time to when one of my kids was younger and his father and I had gotten into an argument because he was like, well, you need to tell him that he needs to make his father proud. And I was like, I'm not going to tell him that. And as a matter of fact, that's not even healthy. Like, I don't even agree with that. So me and him had a disagreement about it. And, you know, I tried to help him see my point. He tried to help me see his point. I feel like the best way to summarize it is that we just agreed to disagree. But I told him in the long run, you don't want your son to for his mission in life to be to make his father proud. And I know that for those of you listening or watching who might be religious or have religious backgrounds, I know that there is scripture in the Bible about honoring thy mother and thy father. But I don't know if the scripture says, please, please, or make your mother, make thy mother or thy father proud. I don't think that. And I also, and I also want to say that because also in the Bible, when it talks about the qualities of love, love is not boastful. Love is, does not have any pride. Right. So, you know, I know I'm not saying that um, love is patient. Love is kind. Love doesn't have pride. That's in there, too. (sighs) Why am I saying all these three things? Because um, because to make somebody proud is a transactional thing. If you're making anybody besides yourself proud, it is a transactional thing is a power thing. It's not rooted in connection. It's rooted in. I want you to please this external source. And the thing about pleasing an external source is that a lot of times those wells dry up. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm looking here. I'm looking there. I don't know where to look. So just rock with me. If you're like, where is she looking? I'm looking at the camera. I I made notes so that I would stay on task. And so that when I get done with this episode, I don't, hopefully I don't have regret about like, oh my God, I didn't make the point clear enough or I didn't touch on this important thing. I spent two minutes. That was it. Because I'm on it. I got to go pick up my child from school soon. I spent two minutes making the notes. So I hope y'all, I hope that this is good enough. If just know I did my best with, with two minutes, I gave two minutes of my best work. So, um, so here's what I want to say. I want to start with this. When you're thinking about, okay, let me, let me give example, a quick example. So a lot of us are raised and um, were raised under and became parents who praise our children, which is saying things like, oh, good job, or you're such a good boy, or you're such a good girl, or oh my God, you're, you're brilliant, you're a genius, you know, like lauding them with praise. We're all, I, I think most of us are guilty. I certainly am. I'm guilty of it. I, I still do it, but I try to notice, th- I try to be mindful and aware to not do it. And, um, I'll also say that being a yoga instructor 
a space holder has been a tremendous gift for me because it makes me it makes me be intrinsic with my motivation instead of external looking for praise. If I was a, if I was a space holder or a coach or a yoga instructor and I'm all of those things and then some I'm an artist, if 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 I was doing my artwork, right? If I was writing my poems or teaching the yoga classes, holding the space and it was guided by I hope that I hope that everybody likes me. Um, my motivations and my reason for doing it is not pure. It's not authentic and it really doesn't allow the truest, most biggest, boldest, most authentic version of Kina be present if I'm doing it because I want to make this person or that person or that person like me or happy, like like me or proud of me. Of course, I want people to be happy, but I'm also okay with people not being happy, right? If my worthiness was tied up in how many people I can make happy, um, if that was the sole indicator, there would be so much to be there would be so much being missed because sometimes the way that I show up and the lesson that I come with is not to make you happy. Sometimes it's to help make you uncomfortable or even to help you realize what your anger is teaching you right? Or your sadness or your grief or your frustration. I tell people all the time, I'm not love and light. You know what I'm saying? I'm love always, but not always, you know, light and, and laughter and love. I'm looking more for, I'm more interested in, in balance and harmony and authenticity and um, clarity. And sometimes you got to look into your anger to find clarity or your, your grief. Okay. So Removing ego, okay, because praise is rooted in ego. Um, acknowledgement is rooted in awareness, okay? So ego would say, I got to make everybody happy all the time. Awareness would say, I'm not for everybody. Do you see what I'm saying? So if I was to praise my child, um, if I was to offer praise, then I'll be assigning his value to how to to what he does. And a lot of us adults, we are trapped in that right now. We are trapped in that. A lot of people don't know who they are outside of their uh, job description or their 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 job position they hold at work. If you lose your job, you maybe you don't know who you are without your job. Maybe if somebody says, well, who are you? You might say what your job is. I'm a teacher or I'm a stay at home mom or I'm a banker or I'm a, 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 a you know, whatever. I don't know. Like uh, I'm a chef, you know, I don't know. I'm looking around my kitchen. I'm a gardener. I'm a botanist. I'm a writer. I'm an artist, you know, but what if you, you couldn't cook, then what would you be? What if you quit your job at the school district or something, then what would you be? And then maybe you don't know because it's tied up in the title, which, you know, that's what your worth is assigned to. So we could get into it. We can get into it. But right now I'm trying to stick on the topic of praise because it's already eight minutes. So if, if your child, so like, for example, my child did the dishes, cleaned his bathroom and then my other child cooked dinner. If I if I was then like, oh my God, you're such a you're such a good boy, or oh, I'm so proud of you. Then am I proud when the dishes are dirty? Am I proud when I cook instead of him cooking? You know? And even if it's not true, even if I'm not even if that's not the only time I'm proud, or like, you know, grades, right? Grades is a big thing that a lot of us was raised and our praise was tied up in, right? We, we were raised on praise. And so when we didn't get the praise, we felt like we were not worthy. We felt like we were not good enough. And, and our parents were probably just as okay with us feeling like that because of course they would withhold the praise and that in itself would be a punishment if you are raised on praise. The downside though is then you, the praise, since the praise is like a drug, what will you do? How far would you go? What would you do for a Klondike bar? How far would you go to get praise? If you can't get it from your parents, because 
you didn't get the good grades, then are you going to look for it elsewhere? Because then you think you're only good enough or you're only as good if people are telling you that you're that you're good or that you're smart or brilliant or beautiful or whatever. Is it only when somebody else tells you? And that's, again, why I said, like, praise is tied up in manipulation, it's tied up in power, it's tied up in ego. Whereas acknowledgement, if praise is tied up in manipulation, then acknowledgement is tied up in clarity. If praise is tied up in power, acknowledgement is tied up in awareness. If praise is um, tied up in um, power, uh, acknowledgement is tied up in connection. So do you want power or do you want to be connect? Do you want to have, do you want to foster a sense of connection? You know, do you want, um, you know, I, I can't remember what I just now said because it was three things and, and it was deep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was deep. Okay. But those three things, right. Um, is the external versus the internal. And I remember when I was in my undergrad, when I was getting my degree in psychology, my degree is in psychology. When I was getting my, my degree, I remember being completely blown away um, by the, the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic, extrinsic motivation. A lot of us who are, who are raised on praise were extrinsically motivated. Um, so we became people, people pleasers. OK, so if you're a people pleaser, then it's probably because you grew up wanting your parents to say, I'm so proud of you. There are some people right now who still wish that their mom or dad or caregiver, whoever raised them, grandma, could just say, I'm so proud of you. And the difference is being like, if you, it, so the difference is, so for me, the way that I usually tell my children, I don't say to my kids, I'm so proud of you. I never actually say that to them. And some of y'all might think that's crazy, but here's what I say. You must be so proud of yourself because you tried so hard and you didn't quit. You didn't give up. You must be so proud. Tell me, how does that feel? Is it pride or is it something else? So they can tell me how they feel. And then if they say, yeah, I do feel proud. I'd be like, oh, I'm so happy that you get to experience that feeling, right? In this moment, I'm so happy for you. But it, that means that even if they don't feel proud, whatever their feeling is, I'm just so glad that they were able to identify it and sit with it for that moment and, and find out whatever it was supposed to teach them, okay? Um, so I, I don't ever be like, well, I'm so proud of you, but more so like, you worked really hard on that. So again, so um, if praise is manipulation and acknowledgement is clarity, then you're going to be more specific, right? You're going to be like, I noticed that you came home and you did the dishes and no one even had to ask you to do that. Wow. Like usually I have to ask you to do that, but this time you did it all on your own. And then you don't have to you don't have to follow that up with a, a validation of their worthiness or your love or care for them. You don't have to follow it up with that. You don't have to, because then it becomes like, the, of course they will continue to do it because they want you to say how um, proud you are of them or how, whatever it is for you. But I just don't think that you want to raise children who all they want to do is please everybody else and make everybody happy. What expense is that at? More so, I think a better way to, a better perspective would be, I want to raise somebody who takes care of themselves and is a good person to other people. But I want to raise somebody who is a good person, who's a good, who, who has a contribution to this world, but not at their own expense. And that's the difference. That's the difference is, um, and of course we make sacrifices. Of course. Yeah. You might come home and you might be dog tired and be like, I wanted to go to bed, but I didn't. I stayed up and did the dishes. Right. 
Yeah, you did. But if you do that and then you're resentful towards the other person for not doing it, then you want them to do it because you want them to suffer because you made yourself suffer. Is that what you want? Because you didn't have your own boundaries or because of the choices that you made or the things that you chose to sacrifice. Is that what you want? And maybe you might say, well, I want to raise a person who um, is not selfish. Yeah, that's right. You don't want to raise a selfish person. So again, that's why I say you want to raise somebody who's a, 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 a who who makes contributions to humanity, but it doesn't have to be at their expense of their mental or emotional well-being or their health. People will go to great lengths to get praise once they are addicted to it. And a lot of a lot of people are addicted to it. I'm not. And I'm not saying that because I'm better than anybody. I'm not because I have severe trust issues. OK, I have se the, like severe trust issues. OK, I'm working through them. All right. It's not as um, it's not as explosive as it used to be. Right. But I had to work through black and white thinking um, for a long time. I just thought everybody was a liar. Right. Praise doesn't work on me because of the 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 trauma that I've experienced in domestic violence relationships and abuse praise doesn't work on me. Okay. That might be a blessing. It might be a curse. We can talk about it another time. All right. But it's the last way to motivate me is through praise. Extrinsic motivation is the last way because I always, I check in with myself and if I don't respect myself or my boundaries or my uh, authenticity, or integrity. And yes, being in integrity means also being authentic, right? You're out of integrity if you're doing it something because you can't wait for everybody to say, good job. You did such a good job. That's still out of integrity. Okay. So it's not authentic. So if I want to live a life where I'm living in, in, in my integrity, yeah, I might not be for everybody and that's okay. And I might make mistakes, but I'm not going to beat myself up to the point where I won't even try again because I'm afraid of that, what, what then becomes rejection. It becomes rejection when the prey, when you're addicted to the praise and then you don't get it. And then everything feels like rejection to the point that you're paralyzed with fear. You won't even try unless you know you're going to win or you know, you're going to get the praise. And that puts you in a position to where you lose even more. You're a double loser <laughs> if you won't even try because you just don't know whether or not you're going to win. You're a double loser. Now, that doesn't mean like gambling, y'all, because I tell people I only gamble if I know I'm going to win. But I, I also then follow that up with it's not gambling if you know you're going to win. Right. So I only say that to say like I don't invest like when I'm being strategic about stocks. Right. And about. um you know, things with my money, like in real estate or whatever, like, okay, if I know I'm going to win, I'm going to do it because there's a system behind it that supports it. So it's not a gamble, but I don't, I don't, you know, so, okay. You know, and then let's think about what our role is as parents. Our role as parents is not to create a perfect photocopy of who we are. Our role is to guide you know, like our, our roles as parents changes as our children develop and grow. It's a beautiful job, um, especially when you get to be present in the different elements of your parenting. I'm a mother and I'm still a daughter. OK, because my mom still parents me at my ripe age of 36. My mama still parents me. All right. Uh, I tell people all the time, my mama first assumption is that I've been killed or that I, yeah, that I had, that I'm dead. However, oh, can I say that? I don't know if I can say that on the platforms these days. My mom's first thought is that something tragic life ending has happened to me if I don't answer the phone when she calls to the point where she went and got the keys phone time from my child and broke into the house because she, I didn't answer the phone call. And then she found that when she broke in, she found out that I was doing a private yoga session 
I was teaching a private yoga session with somebody. So she just tiptoed on back, knowing that her daughter was nice and safe. But when she walked me through all of the levels, the, the different levels of fear that were unfolding when, you know, she came in, she opened the door and then she didn't. And then the, the, my purse was still, in, you know, it was crazy. But anyway, I'm 36. My mama still parents me. I still parent. So when we're li- our babies are little, you know, like we're just like feed them, change their diapers and uh, change their diaper, feed them, keep that wobbly head together. Right. Don't let their make sure they're breathing at night. Uh, so, you know, and, that, and that's a scary thing. Right. Like, man, like I, my my kids are nine and 20 and I still be checking to make sure they're breathing. You never I think you never stop wondering. Right. Then. When they get a little bit older, of course, then you're teaching your food safety, choking, those type of things and strangers um, and and then school. Then you're worried about uh, the or school or daycare, who uh, who they're being exposed to and um, what type of and the, the, the germs that they're bringing home and getting sick and then elementary school. And then then there's middle school. And you know what happens in middle school? I mean, we was all middle schoolers once. I know what was happening in the bathrooms and in, on the party lines. And when we were unsupervised, I, I was a, a very unsupervised middle schooler. All right. And then I became a teenage mom. All right. When I was a freshman in high school. So um, you, the role changes as parents because while our children are little, we're just trying to pour into them, pour into them, teach them everything that we know, um, whether it be from excitement or fear. I don't know. That's your business, not mine. And then, then it turns into once they get older and more impressionable and more dependent or care about their peers approval. Well, then it's our job to then guide them back when they start to veer into a direction that's not conducive or productive for them. Our job is to just, okay, let me guide you back onto the path. Oh, let me guide, let me guide you back on. Oh, let me guide you back onto the path. However many times you got to guide them back, but you got to guide them. So they're still within reach, right? And then once they get a little bit older, when they start to look at you differently, like with more appreciation, admiration, curiosity, right? Which is where my, my oldest son is at right now. It's like, he looks at some of the things that I do and is like curious about it or paying attention now. Like, mom, how did you do this? Or mom, you, you do all of this, you know? And so then I get to pay it, tap into those things and, 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 and follow that interest to help him to see the, the full magnitude of it, just like a blooming flower, you know? So we're always parenting. It's just that we also, of course, have to be open to step into the different roles that is required of us as our children evolve. We evolve too as parents and the job is never done. We're never done. We're never, we're never out of that. So I just say that our goal is to guide them, guide them, guide them, not to create a perfect photocopy of who we are. So who are, who are you to say, oh, you're such a good this, or who are you to say like, um, um, uh, the, the type of things like, oh, good, good boy, good girl, or, um, you did a great job. Do you even know like what the greatest job could be? Or does it just end there? Is that the milestone or the marker? Could there be more? Maybe, but maybe when you do that, maybe you squander it or squash it to just right there. You know, and they might aspire for more or they might aspire to just stay right here. And you know that that won't always be good enough for you because your standards are going to rise. So rise up their standards by challenging them to do more, not by ending the life cycle, by praising them into that. And you will know, you will know children who is like, and I know it seems like it's so innocent for a little baby to be like, Look, look, look at my picture that I made. Oh my God, what a beautiful picture. You're such a brilliant artist. Good job. You know, how about like, wow, I can tell the detail that you did on, you know, the, the, the making the, the donkey look like the right angle, like you gave the donkey this angle. How did you do that? Did you measure that with, um, 
a ruler or did you draw that straight like that? Wow. Okay. And then tell me more. Oh, did, does this have a rep? Does this have a symbol? Does this a symbolic of something or did you just, and did you come up with this on your own? What made you think about that? You can respond with that curiosity. That's acknowledgement. You might even, oh my gosh, I see that you, I came in the house and I saw that you did the, you cleaned your room and you made your bed all by yourself. What was it that made you do that today? Oh, I slept good. Look, this is, this is a, this is one thing I do with Caleb all the time. He had, he'll have a great day at school. Oh my God, Caleb, you had such a great day at school. What were the things that really worked for you to be able to have, you know, such a beautiful day today at school? Like I, you gave your, you, what is your rating for today? Whoa, you gave yourself a, a 10. You only said you was going to go for an eight today. What made the difference? And then he'll be like, mm, well, we did, we did set the goals this morning and I did get a good night's rest. I think maybe, you know, uh, that reading that we did, it made a difference, you know? So then he can notice the things that poured into his own cup and then he can continue to replicate those things and do more on those rather than, yep, I did a good job. It's so unspecific. It's just not specific. Okay. Um, of course, praise does not leave room for making mistakes because it either is or it isn't. It's either there or it's not. Whereas acknowledgement leaves so much room for connection because of the curiosity. Okay. Um, acknowledgement gives people more courage because you're being curious and you're exploring things. Praise is so finite. Okay. Um, Acknowledgement gives room for quality, for quality to improve over time. You might be like, okay, hey, 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 no, no, take a look at this. Look, I noticed that you were, um, you were growing plants, right? It might, I noticed that you were growing plants and then you stopped. Tell me what happened. Why'd you stop growing the plants? Cause that's still acknowledgement. Hey, I noticed that you used to practice basketball uh, five days a week, you, you start, you've only been going twice a week. What's going on? What's, what's been happening? What's, I noticed that there, there's some changes in that basketball. What, what happened? They can tell you then too, because acknowledgement is just about being seen. It's about, uh, feeling understood. So many people wish that they were understood, right? Don't you wish that you were understood, doesn't feeling understood make you feel safe and loved in the world? Whereas a simple, good job, you're such a good girl. There's other praises, I just can't think of any other examples right now, but you can think about how you commonly praise, right? Um, those is like here for a moment and then gone, and it doesn't give you any feedback, it doesn't give you any direction for what the secret sauce was that got you there. So it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like a, a short high. It's like a high, right? And it comes and then it's gone. And then that's why I say like a raised on praise and addicted to praise because you're going to do more to try to get it. Or you get tired of chasing that high and then you just become complacent. It takes out all of the magic of the exploration and of the process, the journey. Praise is the finish line. Acknowledgement is the death, it's the, it's the journey. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. Um, and lastly, again, if I didn't already say this, I think I did, but again, it turns the, it makes you dependent on somebody else. And if you, if you really believe that you have everything that you need inside of you, not today, but every day and always, you're always capable. You're always enough. You're always worthy. And if, if when I tell you that, if you believe that, then your worthiness is not tied up in somebody else's validation not even your mom's or your dad's. And the same goes for your children. Their worthiness does not rise and fall or hinge on your validation or approval. So if you want to raise uh, individuals, if you want to raise humans who are contributors to the world and who are authentic and sincere and who take good care of themselves, 
because they're not doing it at their own expense of their mental or emotional or physical health or well-being, right? Then they need to be motivated by looking inside of themselves and asking, what do I do next? Otherwise it's going to be, well, what, well, should I wear this belt with this, with this shirt? Or should I wear this? Should I wear this sweater today? All right. If you want your child to wear the clothes that pleases them, then it's like, what, what, what do you want to wear? What feels right for you and your style? Now you can give guidance. You can give facts. You can be like this, you know, this is this if you want. But then it's like, again, it's like, whose rules are you following? Whose rules are you socializing your child to follow? What is the socialization? The praise is the socialization. The acknowledgement helps them to figure out how to find their way on their own. You want them to do that. And you also want to train their inner voice with the affirmations. Okay. But not with the praise. It's different. All right. Um, praise is transactional. And unconditional means whether you do or don't, you are still loved. You are still worthy. You're still good enough, you know? And then it's like, now let's figure out if this is making you uncomfortable, let's figure out what the things are. You know, like praise doesn't have room for emotional literacy or language or defining your, your, your feelings beyond more than the five main words, right? I don't know if it's five, but it's a very short list of main words that people use. Okay, what are you feeling right now? If you want to keep feeling that, you can continue doing what you're doing. If you don't, then let's explore some other options. Let's explore some things that will help get you out of this and over into that, if that's what you want. Some people don't want to be happy. All right. Some people want to be mad for right now, and that's okay. Right? Have you ever had your little one? I'm mad. Okay. Uh, and then you want them to stop being mad right away. I recorded an episode about it. I have still not put it out to this day. I'll put it out. Okay. I'll put it out. Y'all. If you want to know what the episode is, it's called, you can't fix me. I recorded it back in 2022 and I still haven't put it out. Shame on me. <sighs> but have you ever had somebody who was like, I'm mad. And maybe if you say like, well, do you want to be happy right now? They might say no. And that's okay. They don't have to be happy right now. But if they want to be happy, you can guide them. And if they want to be mad, then okay. Okay. And when you're ready to, if you, while you're mad, I'm still here. I'm still rocking with you while you're mad. All right. I'm here. Um, if you want to stay mad, you can stay just like that. And that's okay. If you change your mind. And want to be happy, but feel a little bit stuck with getting from mad to happy or from mad to whatever. If you need help, I will help you. Okay. I only help people who want help. That's my, that's my personal rule. I only help people who want to be helped. I don't help anybody who doesn't want help. I'm not going to waste my energy like that. I only help people who want help. That means they recognized that they want the help. And then they're also open to receiving it. Did y'all hear my stomach? I'm hungry. Am I done? I might be done. Um, I only help people who want help. I don't try to help anybody who doesn't want it because that's not my, that's not my role in life. Okay. Like, why am I going to try to make you be something? I don't want to make anybody be anything different. I accept everybody for who they are, where they are, as they are. So that means if you want to be this or you want to be that, that's okay. And if you want help getting to another place and you know the place that you want to go to, even if you don't know, but you're like, I don't want to be like this. I don't know exactly what I want to be, but I don't want to be like this. Okay. That's a really good place to start. All right. So I'd be like, if you change your mind, I'm here and I will help you. I will always help you. If you change your mind, you just let me know. All right. Did I make, did I, th does that make sense? Y'all, if, if, if y'all got it and I don't need to say anything else and I can end it right here, let me know. Be like, got it. If you're like, but what about then say that be like, but what about, and I'll come back. Okay. I will come back. I'm not even going to edit this episode. I'm just going to post it because I won't post it. If I have to edit it, I won't. 
So I'm going to edit it. I'm, I'm just going to post it. I'm going to put a little cover on the front of this thing. Um, and I'm just going to post it right now. Because I can't move on with my life until I get this episode out. Because I told y'all I was going to put this out. And I was like, I'm going to you know, put it as a podcast episode because I'm behind on uploading podcasts. So there it is. The only thing I ask of you for this 30, the, the, my 35 minutes I gave you, only thing I ask of you is to either say got it or say, but what about? That's all. I just need to know. If you're tuning in on YouTube, Facebook, say those things. If you're on Spotify or Apple podcast or something like that, then just give me five stars either way. Just to be like, I appreciate you for coming on here and breaking this down as best as you could with a, a two minute, um, little brain dump before you started. And I'll appreciate that. All right. I'll see y'all next time. I hope that this was wonderful for you all. I hope that, um, this provided clarity and answered your questions. Um, I don't take any credit for any of this. I ask God to help me to communicate effectively and commun and effectively and with clarity, precision. I also asked God to minimize how many times I said, um, today. And I think God, I think God showed up and showed out for me today. So thank you, God. All right. I hope y'all have an amazing rest of your day. I hope that you move forward with authenticity, sincerity, and alignment with integrity. I hope that um, you got some good nuggets out of this episode and that the, and I hope that the most loving, um, most loving and helpful version of me is what showed up and what you received today. All right. That's, that's how I show up with that type of energy and that type of heart. And I'm going to forgive myself for whatever things I forgot to tell y'all today. I'm going to forgive myself right now. All right.